Hello, everybody. It is my pleasure to present uh, our data on integrase-based first-line HIV antiretroviral treatment in the Meditres HIV uh, collaboration. So, as you may know, integrase strands, Stanford inhibitors-based regimens, are preferred regimens for first-line antiretroviral therapy. Is the baseline resistance is not recommended by current clinical guidelines. Currently, there is a growing interest on rapid initiation of first-line therapy. Dual therapy, DTG plus 3DC, is now recommended for first-line therapy by some clinical guidelines, and there is a great debate on whether transmitted drug resistance may hamper its use for test and treat strategies. So, of course, monitoring of transmitted drug resistance is in real time is needed. And, of course, we believe that it will bring some light into this very, very interesting debate. So, in this study, we aim to evaluate the prevalence of transmitted drug resistance to the integrase and the NRTI backbone in newly diagnosed patients that are naive to ART. For this, we use Meditress HIV, which is a consortium that includes ART naive people living with HIV that have been newly diagnosed in France, Greece, Italy, Portugal and Spain during years 2018 and 2019. So, in this collaboration, what we have done, we have sequenced the RT and the integrase uh, following the standard methodologies that uh, were in use at the participant participating centers in the study to evaluate the prevalence of the surveillance drug resistance mutations we use the calibrated population resistant tool for integrase and RT which is available at the Stanford HIV website and to evaluate clinically relevant transmitted resistance we use the Stanford HIV database algorithm Clinically relevant resistance was defined as any resistance level for Stanford interpretation that was equal or higher than 3, which as you know is low level resistance. So we have been able to study uh, 1844 patients in which we had a paired RT and integrase sequence available. The median age of the patients was 40, 79% of the patients were male, 60% were men that had sex with men. The uh, median logarithm of the viral load in copies per ml was 5.01, with a quite a high proportion of patients with viral loads above 100,000 and almost a quarter of the patients having viral loads above 500,000 copies per ml. The median CD4 count was 330 and almost a third of the patients were below 200 when we uh, included them at uh, the study. Almost 50% of the patients were infected by non-B subtypes and uh, CF, uh, CRF OT, O2A G accounted for uh, mostly uh, all of the, uh, a great number of patients that were infected with non B subtypes. So let's see what we found when we looked at integrase transmitted drug resistance. When we looked at the mutations that are included in the surveillance drug resistance mutation list for integrase in Stanford website, we just found 4 out of 1844 patients uh, with uh, SDRNs. This is very low, it's just 0.22% of the patients. Uh, one of these patients harbored T66I, one T66A, one E138T, and 
Interestingly, one patient harbored R263K, which you know uh, limits the activity of uh, second generation instincts, dolutegravir and big tegravir. When we looked at clinically relevant resistance, we found that 2.45% of the patients, which means 45 out of 1844 patients, had any level of resistance using the uh, Stanford HIV algorithm. If we looked at the uh, data, we can see that just uh, one patient had um, intermediate resistance to bictegravir and dolotegravir, which is very, very low. This was the patient that harbored R263K, and the rest of the patients were harboring intermediate or full resistance to the first generation uh, integrase inhibitors, relotegravir and elvitegravir. And uh, in the bottom of the slide, you can see which mutations were responsible for this level of resistance to the first line integrase inhibitors. So, instead admitted drug resistance in this cohort was very, very low, just having 0.05 of the patients with uh, uh, drug resistance to second generation instincts. When we looked at an RTI transmitted drug resistance, we found 3.6% of the patients. This means 66 patients out of 1,844 patients with surveillance drug resistance mutations. Interestingly, 16 patients were harboring M184V, 2 were harboring K65R, and as you can see in the slide, most of the patients were harboring TANS, and these uh, mutations were responsible for uh, uh, a, a great number of the patients that had SDRNs in, 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 in the RT uh, associated with NRTIs. When we looked at uh, the clinically relevant resistance, we found that uh, just 1.7% of the patients were harboring clinically relevant resistance to first-line NRTIs. This means that just 31 patients out of 1,844 patients were harboring clinically relevant resistance. And interestingly, less than 1% were harboring clinically relevant resistance to TDF-TAF and to 3DC-FTC, and 1.5% were harboring resistance to abacavir. So with this data, we would like to conclude that uh, in this paper, we describe the most recent data on transmitted drug resistance to integrase-based first-line regimens in the Mediterranean Europe. We conclude that given the low prevalence of clinically relevant resistance to second-generation integrase inhibitors and to first-line NRTIs in the years 2018 and 2019, it is very unlikely that a newly diagnosed patient in the Mediterranean countries would present with baseline resistance to a first-line regimen based on a second-generation integrase inhibitors. Less than 1% of the patients would have this resistance to the NRTI or to second-generation integrase inhibitors. So, with this data, we would also like to conclude that baseline resistance may not be an issue for rapid initiation of an INSTI first-line based regimen. And with this, we would like to stop and first we would like to acknowledge the team from France led by Anne Genevieve Marceline from Italy led by Mariella Santoro and Francesca Keccherini Silverstein. All the centers that participated in CORIS from Spain, the team from Greece led by Dimitris Paraskevin, the team from Portugal led by Perpetua Gomez, and we also would like to acknowledge VIV for financial support through an unrestricted grant. So thank you very much and I will be happy to take any questions. Thank you.